Welcome back to the channel everybody. In today's video we're going to be talking about tips for slow shutter speed bird photography. I've been posting some photos on YouTube and over on my Instagram with some really slow shutter speeds and I was getting some comments and messages asking how do you take such sharp photos with such slow shutter speeds. The general rule of thumb when you're going handheld is you want your shutter speed to be one over the focal length of your lens. So if you're using a 500 millimeter lens the slowest you'd want to go is a one over 500 but I'll show you even handheld or on on a tripod you can go much much lower than that and I've been shooting even handheld like 1 60th 1 30th 1 15th of a second which is getting pretty ridiculous at 1 15th but it's still possible so I'll go through my thought process some of the settings I use and my technique in the field to get sharp images at slow shutter speeds and I've luckily been able to practice really early on uh, when I first got into bird photography I was doing an internship down in Belize and in the jungle you're pretty much living at 1 2 50th of a second or less and I was using a crop sensor camera so to get decent images with decent image quality it was definitely a necessity for me to figure out how to work with slow shutter speeds and although it's possible to get sharp images at slow shutter speeds I definitely don't walk around at 1 60th of a second every day you know if you have the available light use it I really only use slow shutter speeds like that when it's like a last ditch effort when there's not enough light and depending your gear and your lens your tipping point of when you reach a high enough ISO that you really want to dip to these low shutter speeds is going to be different for me I'm using the a7r4 which doesn't handle noise that well for me generally somewhere between ISO 3200 and all the way up to ISO 5000 that's usually my tipping point where I'll say okay I need to drop down to really slow shutter speeds so let's begin I'm gonna get into the three settings that I find are the most important that help me get sharp images and the first one is to be in continuous shooting mode not single shot most of our bird interactions are pretty short which means you only have a really small window to get your images so using continuous shooting shooting mode and doing short controlled three to five image bursts I think is the best way to go because at the end of the day even if you only had a few seconds of an interaction you might have 10 15 20 images that you're able to go through and choose the best head angle the best body pose the sharpest one maybe the one with the best catch light and when you're photographing a subject like birds you really want to have variations in your shot especially when it comes to the eyes if you're in snow or if you're in rain sometimes a snowflake or a streak of rain can block the eye or they'll have their nictitating membrane which is their eyelid that comes over their eye every few seconds and that could also ruin your shot so just give yourself options give yourself variety the next setting that I want to talk about that I think is really important for slow shutter speeds is to be using back button autofocus if you have your autofocus coupled to your shutter button what might happen is every time you go take a photo it'll evaluate the scene and it might move your autofocus points away from the eye of the bird I will mention something else about it too you don't always have to hold it down if there's a perched bird and it's not moving and you're in one spot and you're not moving forwards or backwards you can highlight the bird's eye with the autofocus points and then just let go and then you don't have to worry about it and as long as neither of you move you can just keep taking photos and you know that the autofocus point is on the eye of the bird. I was out with a few friends who are getting into bird photography and we had a perched bird up and they were continuously holding the AF on button and what they realized in their sequence of images is sometimes the eye was in focus, sometimes it would go to the body, sometimes to the wing and if you're continuously holding it down for a bird that's not moving you're just increasing your margin of error and there's more chance that the autofocus will pick up on something else and uh, jump focus so once you get the autofocus on the eye you can just let go and if you don't have it coupled to your shutter you don't have to worry about continuously shooting with it and the autofocus points moving oh my god there's a bluebird right there first one of the season oh Ooh -hoo -hoo. it's kind of far out but that's awesome it's probably checking out the nest boxes sorry that was kind of rude I just totally cut myself off and if you guys were listening sorry I'm sorry about that I just always have birds on the brain so use your back button autofocus instead of the autofocus coupled to your shutter and that leads into the next setting which is using a smaller autofocus area just like we don't want our autofocus points jumping around when we hit our shutter button we also don't want them jumping around because we're using too wide of a focus area so what I like to use is center and even better than that is flexible spot small or flexible spot medium and I like to just put that right over the eye of the bird and although it's a little bit more difficult when you're handheld to keep that box over the eye of the bird 
if you can do it, you know with certainty that that eye is gonna be sharp so long as you're using good technique. So that's one of the things that I like to do when I'm going at really slow shutter speeds is I wanna be as precise as possible with my autofocus points. And one other setting that I'll mention about the lens itself, this is the 200 to 600. On the side here, you'll have three different modes for stabilization. And for some reason, I don't know why, one is always really inconsistent for me. It doesn't matter how I'm using the camera, it doesn't matter what situation I'm in, it just seems like it produces really soft images. Two has been really a lifesaver and it's really been the difference for me between getting soft images and really sharp images. Three is also pretty good, but for me, two is the shining star. So try it out yourselves, but two has been really, really good for me. So that's another setting. I just keep it on two for everything. And for some reason, it just always produces great results. Now that we have our settings, let's get into the actual technique. And whether I'm going handheld or I'm going tripod, for me, there's really no difference with how low I can bring my shutter speed down. The biggest difference is that I'll get a better hit rate with a tripod than handheld when I'm going to those really low shutter speeds, but I'm still able to get sharp shots when I'm handheld. It's just, I don't get as many as I do when I have a tripod. So when it comes to handheld, holding technique the first mistake that I used to make was I used to think that you needed to be you know really firm and strong and grip the camera and make sure you're not moving but the issue is once you start forcing your muscles that's when they start shaking the most so instead what I do now is I just take a way more laid-back posture so I will keep my elbows in it's always good to keep your elbows in close to the body and once my elbows are in towards my sides I also like to make sure that I'm just breathing normally I think sometimes we hold our breath to make sure that we're really stable but uh, holding your breath is another thing that could add shake and if you're with a bird for three or four minutes and you're hand holding you don't want to continuously keep holding your breath so just breathe normally don't think about it too much just keep a tight posture without forcing anything and the same goes when you're holding your camera you don't have to grip your camera really hard because that's going to cause some shake so what I like to do when I'm hand holding is I like to put as many points of contact as possible so I can distribute the weight over those points of contact without having to force my muscles too much the first thing you'll notice on the bottom here is the tripod foot and I actually keep this on when I go handheld because I like to use that as the base and I prefer this over putting my palm on the lens because if I do any movement in my arm I feel like it's amplified a bit when I'm directly holding the lens whereas if I'm on the tripod foot I find it's not as sensitive and it doesn't add as much shake so I'll keep this on my palm as the main anchor point and I'll just use maybe one or two fingers lightly just to hold the front of the lens up and then I'll take my right hand and put it on the grip and the viewfinder, I'll bring it up and I'll actually apply just a very little bit of pressure on my eyebrow when I'm looking through the viewfinder. And that just adds a really small point of contact to help stabilize everything. Another small detail that makes a huge difference is I always half press down the shutter. So doing that not only adds an extra point of contact, it also reduces the shake when I go to take the photos. All right, so with all that, I'm gonna go through it really quickly again. So tripod foot, palm of my hand, I'll have a finger or two on the front over here just to add a bit of support. Right hand on the grip, and I'll bring it up to my eye, applying a bit of pressure where the viewfinder is right over my eyebrow. And I'll keep my elbows in without forcing them so I don't cause any shake. Breathe normally, you don't have to think about it too much. I'll acquire my focus point, half press down on the shutter, and then take a series of images. And taking a series of images is really the difference between not getting the image and getting the image. So use short controlled bursts to your advantage. And just cause you're going out handheld, that doesn't mean that you always have to be in this one position. If you can find a tree or a rock or something to prop your lens up against, or even to prop your body up against, it adds stability. And when you're at these lower shutter speeds, every little bit counts. And like I mentioned before, this does take practice. The more you go out with your own gear, test it out, refine your technique, the better you'll get and the lower you'll be able to drop your shutter speeds. And when I'm using a tripod, my technique really isn't that different. The biggest thing is since it's mounted on the tripod foot, instead of holding the tripod foot, I'll just put my hand down here and I'll apply a bit of downward pressure. And this allows me to get a better hit rate than when I'm handheld. So with that, I hope I answered some questions that you guys had about slow shutter speed bird photography. And I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Happy birding.